Welcome everybody to a new episode of Flower Circus Talks, episode number 97 already, so uh, almost 100 episodes. Uh, today we're going to talk about roses and where did they go, because uh, there are not a lot of roses on the market. And that's why I invited two specialists uh, and friends of the show as well, Alejandro Renau and Michael Black. So uh, let's uh, get them into the live stream and talk about uh, what's going on uh, in the world with the roses and, and also the other flowers. So uh, let's quickly get them in. Mike, Alejandro, hey, welcome. John. Good morning, John. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, everybody. So, good morning. Good morning, Mike. Thank you uh, for joining us. Uh, you're not uh, you're not in the office. Uh, you're somewhere in the woods. Uh, so maybe the internet <laughs> is not as stable. But uh, anyway, thank you very much for joining. And Alejandro, also, thank you for joining. Um, let's just jump right in. What's happening at the moment? Do we have any roses left, Mike? Mike. You have the honors. Uh, you know, uh, there are the, 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 there are roses. There are roses, but we got to look at it from what was and what is. And historically, not every farm, but most farms around the world have some means of rotation. They cut yeah. today. They ship a day or two later. The flowers are coming into the post harvest, and they they pack it. And they put it out for sale. They take care of their standing orders first. Yeah. And and you know, ever since COVID, it made it more difficult for for for, for that to happen. And 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 the the demand has ramped up so high that there is no rotation in the farms. They're packing. They're they're, they're you know they're they're shipping. They're hydrating. They're they're, they're cutting. They're they're packing. They're cutting, they're hydrating, they're packing, they're shipping. Boom, 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 boom. Ow, 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 ow. Everything's moving really fast, really fast to get it out the door. There's no way to build up a supply chain. There's okay. no way. It's just the, the the demand is out. It's just it's going at such a high pace worldwide that there's no chance to have any kind of a supply bill. For example, where I work in Miami, yeah. typically there's an inventory. Yeah. And uh, uh, the inventories are just extremely low, very, very low. They're, they're, the flowers are selling before they even hit the warehouse. Uh, speculation inventory is hard to find. So I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't ex explain it other than everyone's empty. Yeah. Everyone's uh empty. And then you get the weather conditions. The horrible weather conditions, the un, un, unseasonal weather conditions. You know, this time of year, you know, August, July is supposed to be warm and windy, and it's been cold and rainy. I, I, Alejandro, I, I have seen some pictures of snow in Ecuador. Is that true, or is it just that they're getting some pictures somewhere from the internet? Because I, I don't believe every, everything that I, I see anymore on the yeah. internet. They are true, my friend, and, and, and just, just to remind everybody, we are in the middle of the world. We don't get snow, only in the high peaks, volcanoes and, and mountains. Mm -hmm. we, don't, we don't interact with snow, we only see it in the movies. So for us, having snow on the road is like, I mean, that can, that's pretty much what, what Mike is, is, is telling us, and it's definitely something, one, one of the parts one of the of, of, of the spikes, let's put it like that, of whatever yeah. is happening, it's it's weather. It's something that we we sh we shouldn't be affected by cold weather in late August, early September. That's not that's not the case. It's exactly what what Mike said, and that's definitely something that's affecting production. Other thing that that it's important to understand is is the cycles, right? I mean, I think that we discuss it. The first time we talk and especially roses we have between i mean re regarding the variety between a 12 or 13 even 14 week cycle so yeah. the moment that you caught it i mean what you what you see in march you're gonna see in june you're gonna see in late august uh, early september so definitely that's that's a shortage but that that was something that we were expecting and it was within our numbers 
what we didn't expect was this affection that we have weather-wise that has dramatically, I mean, affected the production and we are in record low numbers. I mean, it's just outstanding how complicated we are. Yeah. There's, I think, another factor involved. I don't know, Micah, but if that was your case at the farm, even though we, we did experience a very high increase in the demand because of the behavior, especially in the American market, I mean, they changed our behavior. The pandemic changed the way the clients interacted with the roses. They started to see the benefits of having roses at their homes. So definitely that was something extremely important and interesting because as the demand grow, of course, everything grew with it. So that, yeah. that was good. But, but then we have a kind of a slowdown in the summer. I don't know if that was your case, Mike. It, it sure was ours, where especially uh, the last week of June, couple of first weeks of July, we saw an important decrease in the demand. So you know how this business is. I mean, the moment that you start getting production, and it was at the same time with a heavy production. So we did some some arrangements, and not only us, but some other colleagues, in order to better serve the All Saints holiday in Europe, right? Yeah. So that also took a toll right now because all those arrangements, when I mean arrangements, I mean production that you take off and you just pretty much focus it on those weeks, yeah. right? So maybe that production that was intended to be harvested within these weeks is not there because it's going, it's going to come and help um, complete or satisfy the demand that we are expecting for the All Saints holiday, which is going to be a very heavy holiday because yeah. of the same pandemic, right? So there are certain factors for sure that are affecting this. When is it going to change? According to my numbers and my technicians, I was supposed to start increasing my production on week 37. That's next week, but that's not the case anymore. Unfortunately, uh, we with this weather, it's going to take at least two more weeks. I don't know, Mike, if that's your case. Uh, at least two. Uh, I, I'm not even sure how to predict anymore because the... the uh the, the, and it's not just flowers from Ecuador. It's flowers from every country. We, you know, we buy flowers in Miami. We buy from Guatemala, Colombia. I'd even bring from Africa if I could. Uh, it's just the weather is uh, bad everywhere. The weather's bad everywhere. And, yeah. you know, another big factor, you know, is that so many hundreds of hectares of product productivity that, a wholesaler or somewhere around the world was buying before a lot of these farms got sold. They got sold and it took a tremendous amount of flowers out of the market. Now it's selective. I'm sure they don't uh, cancel all orders when they buy a farm. But in my case, every farm that I was doing business with, and there were seven of them so far mm -hmm. uh, that were acquired uh, within 12 hours, I was, send an email saying, hey, we sold the farm. I'm cutting all your standing orders. Have a nice day. So, you know, and I'm just one of many. So we all have to go out and we have to search again for those orders to be filled in another farm, which is yeah. taking even more open market availability off the table. Yeah. So but that's why I've been really advocating, regardless of who your supplier is, in this day and age, you need to somehow, some way, as soon as you can, lock down a standing order for at least 50% of what you need. And if you're a speculator, you play the market on the rest. But you need, this is the right time, this is the best time for you to ensure yourself of some supply because I think this roller coaster of ins and outs are gonna go on for quite some time. And, but I think if you plan ahead and you do it smartly, you, you can you can satisfy your customers needs yeah but you, you you're telling uh farms are, are getting sold but uh they're still producing roses or do the, are they producing something else and those roses do they go to the supermarkets because obviously they're still there well there i, I think you would agree that there's there i think there's four main groups of of that are buying farms in a big way yeah. And um, I believe 
three of them are mainly focused on supermarkets. Mm -hmm. The other, I think, is very well diversified as to where they sell their flowers. Mm -hmm. But from what I understand from the things that I've heard, I don't really know facts, but from what I've heard is that three of the four major groups that are buying up the farms cater to supermarkets. So mm -hmm. I don't know what the numbers are. Alejandro probably knows those numbers or someone, somebody can get those numbers, but the numbers have to be in the millions of stems. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, out of the market, millions of stems that would normally be on the spot market available for buying tomorrow, they're gone. Yeah, what you see, the supermarkets have a grow. Yeah, they have a growth of, they say 20%, but but if you hear the figures, it, it must be bigger even. So, yes. uh, so the wholesale now, like you said, uh, instead of having uh, seven uh, different farms where you were buying from, you need to buy from farms that weren't your your suppliers before so now everybody is fighting for those last uh, farms which aren't sold yet to get some supply there That's yes uh, and, and in that regard just, just to complement what mike just said it's true i mean it, it it was a rampage where this big these big groups we all know who whom they are they start growing a lot of a lot of farms and yes, but not only are they supplying supermarkets, they are starting to, to supply wholesale as well. Well, we know that one of them, as you just clearly say, is well diversified. And of course, he's going to start servicing his clients with his own production. But then again, Mike, um, the other one, the Ecuadorian based one, has actually started its operation in Miami to serve uh, wholesalers as well. So yes, I, I would say 75% at least would go to satisfy the mass market but then again another 25 is also when i hit that the wholesale house uh, that the wholesalers but yes it's it's definitely something that has affected the regular availability for the traditional channel right wholesaler yeah. slash retailer slash end consumer or uh, even planner definitely it's it's a different scenario it, uh, it really is uh, on the other hand, what will happen, these figures at the moment, the sales that are going on also in supermarkets are, are enormous. They are very high and that's why they're buying the farms, obviously. But what will happen when we go back more or less to normal and probably the, the, the sales will drop as well. Hopefully they don't drop, of course, but. Well, that's that's an interesting approach. Not only that, but then again, you got to remember that when when the whole pandemic affected us i mean a lot of people make some stream decisions and they just either they shorten their production uh, with i mean shutting out hectares or just putting them to sleep but now you have a situation where everybody reactivated those hectares and not only that i mean big groups are increasing their production yeah. so hopefully we'll i mean this 2022 is is a riddle is is a different it's a difficult year to uh, I don't know to identify or just to see whatever is going to happen. I'm, I'm, I'm having, and I'm pretty sure Mike, you and, and your guys are having a difficult time just generating a forecast of both productions and sales because the market is extremely unstable. And as you see, we have weeks where I mean the price is just outstanding. You can sell a rose with a, a on on I don't know. I mean right now on August higher than whatever you sold them in Valentine's. And then again, most likely in November, we're going to start having a lot of product available. So it's it's difficult, but I would I would pretty much go in the same line as Mike just did, and highly encourage all the clients to set standing orders and play the safe way, because when the farm gets a standing order, I mean that's a commitment that we have. We work for that. That that's yeah. that's our biggest aim. That's what we want. That's the best way to do business because that's the consistent way. And yes, things happen. I mean, but whenever we are we have a shortage of because of these extreme productions that go beyond our control, we're very proficient in informing the clients of whatever is happening so that they can take the decisions. But this is not the majority of the cases. This is just I mean some eventualities that you have. So yes, in that regard, Mike, I applaud your initiative and I and I endorse it. And definitely, we need to encourage the clients to increase their standing orders. Yeah. Um, 
we already mentioned it or Alejandro, you mentioned it. A lot of uh, growers uh, put their crop to sleep or just uh, some hectares that, that they were just uh, pulled up. Uh, how is that at the moment? Are we at the same level already or uh, what's going on? Can you just estimate? Mike, well, can I, you, oh, Alejandro. Yeah, Mike, Mike. Mike, you start, and then if you want to, I'll, I'll just talk. I can tell you, we, we, uh, Jeff Fresh is a very small boutique farm, and um, you know, we, we, we've been trying to complete a uh, one hectare expansion for far too long. We cannot get the right materials we need, we cannot get plastics, the correct plastics, at the prices that we budgeted for. The prices are climbing and climbing cardboard, every supply that you could possibly need. And the biggest problem that we have lately is to buy the uh, mother plants. To, there's a shortage of, of, of the sterile mother plants that we yep. need to, to, to begin the whole process to grow a new variety. And I mean, this is all stuff I've learned in the past couple of years, but let me tell you, it's a, uh, who knew, who knew that there would be a shortage of that. Yeah. And, um, um, uh, a lot of farms, like Alejandro said, a lot of farms up, uh, did a lot of uh, eradications. and all, But also kind of in summertime, because historically, most farms in summer, they change some varieties. Yeah. You know, they want to stay current and they change some varieties and they pretty much figure, well, you know, August and September and October, it's really not a great big time for roses. So it's a good time to maybe change some varieties and plan that way. Yeah. And a lot of these guys uh, um, have lower productivity because they're just changing varieties or, or, or having the same difficulty of delays of getting the materials they need yeah. to change the varieties because uh, uh, there's a shortage of almost everything that you can imagine. And prices are just going up and up and up. Yeah, that's, that's what we see in Holland as well. There are a lot of growers who want to expand or are already building, but the prices of glass, uh, steel, and, and you yeah. name it, it's it's all going up. So everybody's waiting uh, for the prices to, to go down uh, to make it worthwhile mm -hmm. uh, building greenhouses. But Prices never go down <laughs> for that stuff. There's such a high demand and, and, and the... the the, the containers, the sea containers that are moving around the world are just moving at such a slow pace. And the price of a sea container from Asia to somewhere in the United States, maybe somewhere else has gone up like double, triple, quadruple the yeah. price. So the, everything's going at a snail's pace. I mean, look, I'm not a complete expert on it. I'm learning as I'm going. But I will tell you that every day, we're faced with some kind of new problem because we something changed or something didn't arrive or something is unavailable. Yeah, it's I, it's it's not only flowers. I think it's it's everything at the moment that's uh, that's not there. Uh, we yeah. lost Alejandro there for one minute, so hopefully he will reconnect uh, again. Alejandro, uh, can you reconnect again, please? Um, so, Mike, you're obviously buying as a lot uh, as well from other farms. They probably also uh, have the same problem, just getting the stuff in. And uh... yeah, okay. yeah, every everyone has the same problem. I don't know. It doesn't matter where you're at. Yeah. Everyone's faced with the face with the same problem. And the big groups, you know, they have the big buying power. So I guess they're first in line. You know, they're buying. Yeah. They we buy. A thousand and they buy a million you know it's it's uh uh you're definitely not first in line when it comes to chemicals and and, and fertilizers and plastics and all that stuff the big groups are going to get them first yeah yeah there was an uh, interview with uh with alexandra farms with uh, joey azut was actually saying the same thing it's uh it's also the fertilizers and all those things uh, di difficult to get them uh, to get them in uh, but that's another good reason why the prices of roses and other flowers are rising. It's not just because the market conditions, it's because the cost of production is just skyrocketing. Yeah. And what about uh, getting people in? I mean, uh, I hear the problems in Europe, not enough people to get the work done, not enough truck drivers. 
How's the situation in Ecuador? Alejandro, can you tell more about it? Ecuador, Ecuador, I mean, thank God it's not that complicated. I mean, we, we, labor, labor hasn't been a major challenge. It has been in Miami. I'm pretty sure that Mike can, can feel it not only with his, with his warehouse employees, but what we've experienced with airlines that they don't have enough people to clear the, the airway bill sometimes. So not only we present as growers slash importers, a situation with our clients where we have to explain them that because of the weather or whatever cycle or whatever we have discussed so far, there's going to be a shortage in their orders. Now we have another problem, not, I mean, just it is what it is, where the airlines, they don't have enough people to clear their airway bills on time or just agriculture won't have enough inspectors. Uh, to deal with the volume that they're getting. So that's that's another challenge that we definitely have. And and it's it's yeah, it's it's it makes the business more interesting, let's say, more factors that can affect your business. So definitely not boring at all. I mean it's it's a new challenge every single day. Yeah, but for me it, it sounds a bit strange. Uh, let's put it this way. The amount of roses uh, isn't as big as two years ago coming from Ecuador. But all of a sudden, we have a problem at airports with not enough stuff. We have problems with trucking because we have not enough space. But the amount of flowers is not on the level like two years ago. So so once we get back on the level or even grow, uh, how are we going to face that? So it, it's it's not just the airlines themselves that have an issue with labor. It's also, there's a whole, so when you're talking about the United States, when you talk about Miami, let's just say, I mean, we're, I, you're, John, your reach is around the world, so this might not make sense to everyone, but for those who are importing into the United States and they're going through Miami, the airline facilities do not have enough direct labor to depalletize all the boxes and separate them by airway bill, by customer, by all the what they have to do. And then after that process, there's not enough agriculture inspectors to do the inspections in a timely way like they, they used to be way faster. We now budget 24 hours only for that process. We used to budget 24 hours for the entire process. Now we budget 24 hours only for the inspection process. And then once that's finally done, then you have a whole nother deal of waiting your truck online for maybe 8, 10, 12 hours sometimes to be loaded. Wow. Just to get your boxes off the airport property, it takes a long, long time. So you're looking at 24 to 48 hours maybe just to get your boxes from the airplane door into your truck's door. That's a real problem. Well, That's I a real problem. And it causes a backlog in the airlines facilities. Their facilities are only so big. Yeah. And especially like what happened in mother's day, uh, the, the, there was no space. They couldn't even bring the boxes in the building. In some cases, they were sitting outside on the runway because they just ran out of room because the whole chain imploded the whole, they didn't have people. People are getting paid in the United States. Well, were I don't know to, to stay home. It's unbelievable. So, so, so why would you, why would you sling boxes at the airport all night when you could stay home and watch Jerry Springer? Is he still on? <laughs> or is he it is. reruns? Unbelievable. Yes. That, that man must be a 130 already. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's really difficult because it's hard work. And like you said, in Miami, it's difficult. It, uh, uh, you have to, uh, you, it's hard to find people. It's yeah. very hard to find people who want to work in, the, in that environment. Yeah. In but, the but, cold environment. It's very difficult to find people. Let's go back to the inspections. I mean, uh, pro I think it's a, govern a governmental uh, institution, is it? The, the inspections. Yeah. Yes. Did they cut down on staff or are they just uh, not from working what I understand, anymore? From what I understand, I don't know if this is 100% correct or not, but from what I understand is during COVID, many of the inspectors retired 
or okay. had uh, uh, underlying conditions that would not allow them to be working around other people and to be exposed to possibly getting COVID. So um, the, 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 there is like a, 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 an academy, a school that they have to go to before they get hired. And from what I understand, they didn't have a new academy class for a while. And that's why there's a backlog of people. They don't have enough people. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just to confirm, uh, Caroline is saying greetings uh, from an equally struggling UK. Yeah. I think we're struggling all over the world to, to get uh, flowers in and get them in on time. Uh, I know for a fact that, that supermarkets in, in the UK are struggling as well. Normally, they just uh, said to a truck to several trucking companies, what's your best price and we will truck with you. And now it's the other way and the other way around. And, and uh, trucking companies just say, who's going to pay the much the, the most and we will uh, ship your stuff. So that that's changed there as well. Uh, Alejandro, you also said that uh, there's something with the runway at the moment in, in Ecuador. So not enough flights. So that adds up uh, as well. Yeah, definitely. Well, they're making some maintenance. And remember, Ecuador, I mean, Quito's airport, which is our biggest airport and our prime source for export of the flowers, it has only one runway. And even though it's new, the airport has, I mean, it's a little bit shy of 10 years, they have to make maintenance. And whatever that happened, I mean, that's the only runway that we have. So, yes, there are limited flights right now. And it's it's taking a toll as well. I mean, it's it, it reduced the capacity between 25 to 30 percent on week 36, which is the one that we're actually living in. And it, hopefully, it will end by Sunday. So, if that's the case, then we regain normal uh, infrastructure capacity on, on on next week. But yes, that was another factor that's definitely taking a uh, have to take under consideration to fully understand what's, what's going on and how come such a shortage of, of production. Because even though that we've experienced a dramatic increase in demand, especially, I mean, of wedding colors, because the, the wedding season started and it surged pretty much, it's it, it's a full throttle. The, the offering is low in every color. I mean, I'm, I'm struggling even with reds, which is kind of interesting, but Yes, that's that's the case, John. Yeah, it's it's unbelievable. And and we talk normally we talk about the wedding season, but I think we can talk about the wedding year because wedding yeah. years, wedding yeah, years. Yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. Because, because everybody uh, wanted to marry in the summertime, but now there's no space in summertime, so they're looking for autumn, and then they're looking in winter time and just to get married. I mean, so we can't talk about the season actually anymore. I think so. This this is gonna be for a long time. We're teaching yes, our customers, we're teaching our customers and we're trying to preach, don't sell your weddings like you used to, you know, don't let your customers sell their weddings like they used to, sell their weddings by color, not by variety, you know, and, mm -hmm. and uh, be more diverse with what flowers you use in these weddings and events, and um, 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 it'll be a little lot safer, it'll be a yeah. lot safer. You got to remember that, that the florist, the florist and the wedding florist, those are creative people. Mm. Those are artists. They're not so much, you know, plan ahead corporate business types. They're more artists and their look and and their 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 image is so important to them and they put a lot of pressure on their suppliers to give them exactly what they want. And at you the know, last minute. At last minute. Well, you know what? That's a whole nother problem that many of these events people are waiting for the moment to receive a deposit from their customer before they go ahead and place the order to their wholesaler or supplier. Yeah. And you know, I'm telling people, I'm telling people, I said, look, you know. At this moment in time, if you know three weeks ahead what you probably are going to need, then you probably should tell us. And if you need to cancel or change something along the way, then we'll deal with it because it's way better for us to be able to supply you yeah. with advanced information than, like Alan said, you know, hey, I need 
5,000 player blockers tomorrow. You know, it's just not, it's not happening. So if, if you're afraid about the deposit part and that you're going to disappoint your supplier because you had to cancel, your supplier at the, in this kind of market is not going to really have that much of a challenge to direct those flowers somewhere else. So yeah. it's kind of like not an, it's not a dangerous thing right now in this situation to order even if you don't have your deposit yet. And I think that's what really holds up a lot of those orders is they're so big and there's so much money on the table that they don't want to place the orders, not even just for the flowers. They got to do all the rental stuff and the linens and the, all the things. There's so much that they have to spend. So uh, oftentimes they don't want to uh, go out and make those commitments unless they have money in hand deposit from their customer. And sometimes those deposits come a week before the wedding. Yeah. But I think if you're open with your supplier and just say, okay, I don't have a deposit yet, but look, this is this That's is right. probably coming up. I mean, just be open to each other. I mean, only exactly. that way we can we can uh, go forward. That's that's the only way. Exactly, and and, and as Mike just said, and uh, it's we gotta work together. I mean, communication has to flow both ways so that they know the necessities of the of the growers and and importers and wholesalers and and, and their suppliers. I mean, understand what's behind that order and and the need to place it in advance so that everybody can make the arrangements or to to fulfill it and as as mike clearly stated it is true i mean if something happened you don't get the deposit no problem at all it's going to be not that complicated uh, to allocate those flowers elsewhere and everybody will understand i mean nobody wants anybody to take in extra risks that they can't afford i mean that's not the case the case is to have a, a clear flow of communication for everybody to make better decisions. So in that regard, that but that it's also very important. And not only that, Mike also stated a very interesting point, and is that this the flower shops or whomever are handling weddings or big these big events, there are artists, I mean, there are artists and they create a lot of things. And we're also encouraging, I don't know you, Mike, but we're trying to push different colors i mean use a different palette for your weddings i mean try to stay away from the creams and the whites that they're so demanded i mean just be a little bit more aggressive pursue the hot pinks pursue the oranges or whatever and it's been interesting because i mean people are starting to change the way they they see the traditional weddings and, and i think that's also something that we need to enforce yeah i think that that's really important but also for florists just have a look out at and, and, and ask your supplier as well, which flowers are available for more or less, or which flowers are available, first of all, and, and start working with that. Some some flowers are in season, so probably there there's more or less enough of those flowers. So, but, but it, 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 they get kind of caught. It's really not their fault because most of these wedding consultations, they're done six months, a year in advance. You know, they yeah. came in, they probably shop between a couple different companies and these companies they go out of their way and make amazing samples for these customers and they show this you know amazing yes. design done with amazing roses yep. and spray roses and garden roses and whatever else they can possibly dream up of putting in there and they have this look and this whole you know they 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 use you know there's new software like details and these other kinds of software where where they they send the customer actual pictures of what it's going to look like and a whole breakout sheet and this is what they sell their event that's how they do it so when it gets down to like four weeks five weeks six weeks before the event it's finally absolutely going to be a reality they re out they realize that oh my god there's no flowers in the market what am i going to do yeah you know and You're but right. they, the way that the process works, it's usually the larger events are usually done months, maybe even years in advance. So and, and, and a lot of these event florists, which are very talented people, they they have an image to keep up and they they have, you know, they, they have uh, 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 their art to protect and data, it's very difficult for them. It's a tough pill to swallow that they can't have yeah. exactly what they want. Yeah. It's a tough pill to swallow. And I feel really bad about that sometimes when we have to tell people, 
hey, I'm sorry, we're going to have to mix that up a little bit. But I really feel that all the wholesalers and, and, and importers and growers that I know, I really feel that these are people who want to really take care of their customers. Yes. Because yeah. our business is a relationship business. You're, you know what I mean? If you're, and, 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 and I think that people, that these event customers, no matter who your supplier is, that your supplier is really working hard to really fill your order and take care of your needs. But at the same time, they need a break because they're working twice as hard as they ever did. Everyone I know is working six, seven days a week, 10, 12, 14 hours a day. I'm on the phone in the morning and the night with all kinds of customers, all kinds of suppliers trying to get it done. And, I, and, and, and so I think together as a community and as an industry, we could all continue to work together and give right advice to your customers and insist and push them to give you, even if it's yeah. speculative, just give you that information and let us work on it. And it is nothing's going to be perfect, but we're going to, I don't know anyone who isn't going to try their very best to fill an order or to find a flower. Doesn't matter. People trade with each other. I know lots of farms are trading with each other. And I know lots of importers in Miami are trading with each other. Obviously, over in Holland, everyone's trading yeah. with each other all day long. So, you know, I think that's what we need more and more of. We need to work together and we need to grind through it. And like Alejandro said, eventually the things are going to fall back into, into place and production will be back. And, you know, yeah. we'll be begging people to buy flowers again. I think it's very tough for an industry who never said no, always supplied the right variety, the right length and everything. So we, true. we never said no. Uh, the growers mm. didn't say no. Uh, export companies, so import true. companies, nobody knew the word no. And now all of a sudden we had to learn the hard way and say, sorry, we don't have it. No, we can't supply yeah. you. And, and, and that hurts because we never heard it the last hundred years. And that makes yes, it sir. really hard for, for the industry. Uh, so yeah. well said, John. That's so true. Yeah. And Caroline is saying as well, I hear you. Most UK brides are being understanding. The odd bridezilla, but mostly OK. Uh, just taking too long to reorganize everything. Uh, we're talking to, to some of those florists as well. And they were saying, OK, we uh, budgeted it two years ago. And now we have to work with a way other budget. And, and that's that's what we're saying. That's the like, case. They make these plans far in advance. And I think another problem, and Alejandro, I think you will agree that that a lot of us, we do all our th thinking from what we did last year or the year before or mm -hmm. the year before that. We use historical information to kind of like plan our future. And I think we got to change the channel on that. We can't plan anything from what we did before. We got to plan from what we're, we got to kind of like make our best guess. We can't really put numbers down from the past that's that's absolutely true mike and and yes i mean it's 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 a, a very very good approach uh, the only thing that we need to know and and it's important that everybody know is the timing that we have as growers right let's say that something is very trendy right now and by as, as Mike said it before, I mean, right now we're in a shortage of everything because of the growth of this big group. So let's say our variety is hot right now. I mean, for us to have it in production is going to take at least one year, at least. So we don't know what's going to be the market behavior in one week, uh, in one year in advance. And in that regard, Mike, I think that we as trendsetters, let's put it like that, we need to work closely with the designers, with, with the big shots of, of the world so that we can, I mean, that they can create and design because you know that they create and other people follow, right? Knowing what's available in the market and what's going to take for everybody to satisfy that expectations and that demand. So, I mean, in that line of transparency, I do believe that there need to be more involvement from the big designers, the big uh, flower range companies and everybody that's trending and it's putting a new trend so that we can supply that 
trend, right? And can make it happen. And not only a wish uh, for somebody that's going to be have, I mean, that's going to need to pay a lot of money or to to get those few stems of whatever they they're looking for. We need to work closely so that production can meet the demand that they are generating. I don't know what what your thought on that line, Mike. No, I completely agree. That's a, that's a job for the industry associations to to you know to to begin that done. And we all have relationships with some kind of social media influencer that has tons of followers. That they have a lot of uh, they have a lot of uh, a power to to explain things to uh, up and coming florists and event florists. Uh, 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 and everyone needs to contribute to that for sure. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. And and I mean, once we have, the, let's hope we can settle that part. So we we're more into communication with those designers, uh, the top arrangers. We're gonna set uh, the trend. What's more, we can do. I think transport and and uh, staff is a big problem. But still. Um, we are using 100,000 different box sizes and we're losing a lot of space because the pellets are not filled 100%. Is that maybe something we can do as an industry? Mm -hmm. Mike, you want to take it or should I? I think that's an impossible mission. Yeah. Yeah. Because everybody has his own box and everybody believes it his box is, is the best or, or I mean, we're losing, no. I heard 30% of, of, of space just because uh, the boxes don't fit on a pallet. I don't know if that's the case. Unfortunately, I don't have that kind of, uh, of information with me, uh, John, right now. But I, what I can tell you is that the airliners are, I mean, maybe 10, 15, 20 years ago, they understood how they need to build their planes or whatever so they charge you by the volumetric weight right yeah. volumetric is pretty much what the box based on its measure should be i mean charged for it so in our case and i'm pretty sure in mike's case uh, we optimize as much as we can our boxes so that we feed the exact amount of stems that we can in order to be efficient we as a grower pursue that the difference between the actual weight of the box and the volumetric weight don't surpass the three percent which is it's complicated but i mean there are ways to do it but of course my box cannot be the same as mike's box because maybe we have different different kind of roses i mean not even to a summer uh, flower grower or a a tropical uh, flower grower. So there are differences that, that can be stabilized. I mean, we, we could get into a point where the airline will tell you, well, you know what, guys, these are the boxes that I'm going to use and I'm going to charge you X amount of dollars per, per kilo. So you do what you got to do. Then we would find something like that. But everybody's pursuing its own well-being, a benefit, an optimization. So it's just like Mike said, it's very complicated for everybody to have the same product. And I see that Kirsten uh, said about standardization, that's the problem with it. We would love to, but unfortunately, everybody needs to pursue its own efficiency. So yeah. that's a that's big challenge. Yeah, uh, why I mentioned this, I had a talk with Jeroen van der Hulst from Flower Watch, and he's doing a lot of business in Africa and trying to see how that works. And I will show you one picture. This is uh, on the right hand side, you can see the pellet, uh, how they build it. And they went up more than 30% just uh, on the same pellet and, and, char and charge the same price. So this could already help a bit, for example, with, with the uh, limited amount of airspace that we have. Yeah, I mean, it could. It's it's just a huge. Believe it or not, those, the, believe it or not, those jet pallets, even though they have odd sized boxes from different farms, they're like jigsaw puzzles. They put them together, yeah. and those jet pallets come off those planes. From what I've seen, and I've seen lots of jet pallets come off of planes, uh, uh, they're pretty efficiently built. Whether they're different random box sizes or not, they figure it out. I mean, they're they're very good at it. But there are companies that I know in Miami that every single box that they sell are exactly the same size. Yeah. Maybe they have two or three 
different sizes, but they all calculate into the same box size mm -hmm. and they're extremely efficient on, on many ways, not only with the airplane, but also in their warehousing and their palletization and their shit in, in trucks and stuff. So, so, but that's possible when you're a company that when you only sell your own production, your own flowers mm -hmm. and like for a company like mine, that's really difficult. I, I buy from over 200 vendors. It's uh, it's, it's, it's really kind of difficult to have all the same box size when you're buying from all different parts of the world. Yeah. And not only that, Mike, I mean, it, you can't use the same box if you want to put a 40 centimeter and a 110 centimeter rose. So there are a lot of variables that, that go beyond what, what, I mean, the regular consumer might, might want to uh, look at, but there are a lot of factors to consider when you want high 40 centimeters, it's completely different than a 40 centimeter grower in the northern part of Ecuador or, oh, you see, so it's, it's a challenge. I mean, it, it's worth analyzing. It's worth making the effort because definitely it will be something that everybody will benefit from, but it's very challenging. Yeah. Uh, looking at, uh, we don't have, uh, I, I'm circus, but I don't have a glass ball. I can't see what's hap gonna happen in the future. Uh, but obviously uh, the holiday season is coming up as well. We still have the weddings going on all winter season probably. We're going to get into uh, uh, 1st of November, Christmas, Valentine's, uh, 8th of March, English Mother's Day. It's all coming up Easter time, Mother's Day uh, in all parts of the world in May. I mean, these coming six months is going to be, are we going to keep up with production? Or is it going to be uh, maybe in June next year that we finally say, okay, now we're up to the level where we, uh, where we should be? Mike, can you... I, I, I don't I don't see demand uh, I don't see production outpacing the demand I don't see it happening I think there's still going to be very strong demand and 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 up and down cycles with weather and I think that uh, you know farms that pinch they're gonna have to struggle a little bit more than farms that don't pinch uh, uh, as far as their low cycle yeah um, uh, but but I mean you Give me a month of the year and I'll give you a reason why flowers are going to be demanded. It's just going to be a really strong, hard job to get over the next 12 months or whatever. I think I think a lot, a lot of products have stabilized. A lot of the market where six months ago, a year ago, you couldn't even get it. You yeah. couldn't buy a carnation. You couldn't buy other flowers aside from roses. It, a lot of that has stabilized now. And, you know, you know, and like Alejandro said, like the reds are starting to dry up now a little bit. You can't find reds like you could two weeks ago. You know, it, it, it's 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 going to continue. That trend is going to continue. You're going to have it. You're not going to have it. It's going to be there. It's not going to be there. It's going to be demanded. It's not going to be demanded. Like you said, July, July, the rose market was not good. Yeah, there's a lot of flowers around in July. Coolers were full. People were doing deals. Now coolers are empty. There's not a deal to be had. And, and the coolers are empty all over the world. I mean, I was empty. Uh, I was in Ukraine. Yeah. They've got some big rose growers here as well. Some of them have their own flower shops. Normally, they have 50 buckets of, of roses there. They had three buckets of roses. I mean, it's all over the world. And that makes it very special as well, I think, this time. Yeah, it does. Yeah. So, Alejandro, what, what's your prediction on, on the coming six month, coming year? Mm. It's, it's going to be a very interesting year, uh, just as Mike said it. It's, there, there are a lot of reasons, and as you stated, John, I mean, we have holidays worldwide that are going to, I mean, that they're going to need to be fulfilled. So uh, just, a, just the way I see it, it's the second semester is going to be very interesting. We have an old Saints holiday that's gonna be very, very strong. We don't celebrate it that much in the States, but it's definitely very important in, in Eastern and Western Europe uh, and also in some parts of South America, even Mexico. So there's gonna be a huge demand for flowers. That's gonna take pretty much the last, uh, between two weeks of October. So that's, that's definitely gonna affect. Then November is gonna be a month where you're gonna see some production available, but then again, people are gonna catch up with their weddings and, and events, so there's gonna be a high demand as well. 
December, we all know December, January, with all the supermarket uh, product that's uh, going right now or it's uh, intended, you won't see any product whatsoever because remember the logistics in the supermarket starts two weeks before that the regular uh, supply chain so it's going to be complicated february we have russian women's day which also takes a lot of production march because of the regular cycle is going to be a very tight production month and then april is the same thing as january and may as uh, as february so complicated the i mean my 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 advice would be taking away mike's uh, words try to secure the i mean the majority of your business on standing order because it's important to see how how a, um, a grower thinks when you have a play a business i mean when you have an order that's in standing order you have the commitment that's going to be a 52 week order right so that's the kind of business that you want you don't want to go and take advantage when the market is i mean surging but then again you don't want to take the loss where you have a lot of product available so you're always going to go after the standing order and those products that you have on standing order will pretty much make the production much more stable and it's a win-win for everybody yeah so it's complicated it, but again the way to mitigate that risk is to put standing order that that would be my 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 the way that i see it and my recommendation based on what mike said before and i think if you look at the open market the open market is way smaller now with a lot of uh, big farms being bought uh, all the holidays the worldwide holidays will affect more than ever so mike uh you buying uh for the states but, but the 1st of November, which is big in, in uh, like Alejandro said, in Southern Europe and Eastern Europe, is going to affect you way more than it did before, probably. And all the other holidays, which are celebrated in all other parts of the world, will affect you yeah. more. So, yeah, yeah. People, people should be prepared and, and, and should study the, or should yeah, uh, talk to their growers, to their suppliers, and... and Get a fixed order in but also study the worldwide flower big flower days because those are going to be crazy as if i hear you both yes it will and 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 it's and, and you can see the faces they don't want to sell no for those holidays they never want to say, sell no so it's uh it, it's it's strange finally we sell all our flowers but we're not happy Yes, it's very stressful. It's I think that that's that's a very way, good way to to see it because yes, I mean number wise and result wise, it has been I mean one of the best, if not the best, semester of, of the past twenty years. But it has been so stressful that it it hasn't been enjoyable, and we hopefully that will change. Yeah, and very I, well said. I have to agree with that completely. <laughs> it's so stressful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I, I, I talked with English uh, florists last week, and they're really at, they they haven't had a holiday for for a year and a half, working on on a lot of funerals as well, and and a lot of weddings now, and they're really uh, they're struggling. But everybody in the industry is struggling, and that's uh, that's what we have in common. And and we need to help each other out and fix those orders. Talk to each other, even if you're not one hundred percent sure if the order will continue or not talk to each other i think that's that's the most important thing what's going on are there any any alternatives uh everybody's helping each other out now because we need yes to. yes and in that regard actually I have, not I have to be very no. i'm no. sorry actually <laughs> not man actually no? not it's no i think it's kind of bullshit that that uh some of these big groups come in and buy farms and they don't even give you a professional courtesy of 30 days to find your supply somewhere else. They just in 30 I, seconds just say, you know what? Sorry, yeah. buddy, you're out. So no, I don't agree with that at all. I think that there's a lot of cold, you know, behavior done with some of these acquisitions and, 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 and I don't know how to describe it, but if we were at the bar having a few beers, I'd really explain it to you. No. I don't think it's really cool. That, <laughs> no, no. I don't think it's really cool the way these guys operate. Um, and if you're somewhat of a competitor, you know, you're 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 just doomed. You just doomed. And you could have you could spend the past 15 years building yeah. a relationship with a farm. 
You could have just spent the past three months buying inventory that you didn't need just to preserve your relationship to ultimately be told in a six hour period that all you have built and all you have done has been yes. a complete waste of time and you're out. I totally so, agree yes. on, on that one. I think what, what I let's specify it. The, the, the traditional traders are helping each other out. And, and that Correct. part is, 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 is great. I mean, I, I see people helping each other, florists helping each other because there's no sundries or whatever. They are helping Correct. each other out. The, the traditional trading, they are helping each other out. And, and what they're, what's happening in, in yeah, the supermarkets, that's just cold business. That's only about figures and that's it. They don't give a peep about People from the seven, from the seven suppliers that Jeff Resch had, that were sold, only one good outcome came from all, from from it, and that's you know that's with another company that's actually in Miami, that's part of that group. That's mm -hmm. the only one good outcome that's come for us. And you know we had to go and scramble and go and replace all those flowers from somewhere else. So imagine we're a small company. Imagine all these big companies that had to do the same. Yeah. That took yeah. so many stems out of the market, just that. Yeah. So it's the acquisitions and then it's the replacements of what you lost. So it takes a lot of stems out of the market. And it isn't just roses. It's uh, unbelievable. It's, uh, Caroline, right. is, Caroline is saying as well, collaboration is the key, more important than ever, and particularly in the face of the big boy attitude. Yeah. It, it's, it says as all yes. we need to... We need to uh, to work together, and uh, that's why I'm really glad that uh, you took the time to uh, to explain what what is going on, and and uh, that this isn't over yet, and this will take a while. This will take, uh, if I hear it correctly, this will take a year. I mean, people are building, people want to expand to to get up to to the level of of to to, to supply the demand, but there's just not enough material. Not only flowers, but also the. the I think overexpansion is a whole other problem for the future. I think overexpansion is going to be yeah. a problem three years from now. I don't yeah. think that. I think we should expand, yes, but we shouldn't overexpand because we're going to, three, four years from now, if everything just finally settles and we get back to the normal grind of the flower business, there's always too many flowers in the market most of the year. So yeah. hopefully that. The people that are expanding are not overly expanding and they have like the whole five, 10 year plan in mind because the costs are not going to get any lower. Yeah. Yeah. And labor is going to be difficult. There's so many things yeah. play, playing a big role. And, and I think the oversupply, how many growers haven't worked for really tiny margins over the last 10, 20, 30 years. And now we're finally making some money. And if we're not careful, we will lose it all in two, three, four years. Definitely, definitely. And that and that approach is very interesting. And thank you for mentioning it, Mike. Yes, I mean we 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 are we are concerned. The fact that you can't find mother plants tells you something. You gotta see. I mean, what what's gonna come ahead? And yes, we need to be very cautious on the over expansion because it will bite us. I mean, it's a cycle. Everything is a cycle. Remember that. And Apparently, we, we haven't learned our lesson yet. I hope we, we still have time to. But yes, we got to be very cautious because this is something that hopefully it will keep like this. I'm very positive and I, I would love this, this change in the behavior to be sustainable. With an over oversupply of products, but Let's hope not. I mean, it's from our side, at least at Naranjo, we are being very respectful, very, very, very cautious with our with our growth and expansion. Only what we see in our five year projection. Let's hope that everybody is. I'm pretty sure Mike, same thing. You've done also always uh, uh, a very good job in that. So I hope that the rest of our competitors and colleagues see us that see it that way, so that we can make this good moment last in an enjoyable way for everybody. Yeah. Okay, gentlemen, thank you very much uh, for joining. Before I forget, uh, Mike, Mike and your team, congratulations with the award you won. Wholesaler thank you. of the yeah. Year. Wholesaler <laughs> of the Year, you go. Thank yeah. you very much. 
so Florida you, State okay, Forest ahead. Association. Yeah. So you can see how important it is for for people just uh, the, the the human touch that you bring into the business and helping each other, uh, helping people out as well when things go tough. So that's uh, that's yeah. really cool. And also another thing, John, that we need to that we need to highlight here and congratulate Mike is is how innovative he's been with the tinted roses. Have you seen his animal collections? And it's like, dude, what are you doing, man? Give us a break for the rest of us. So <laughs> congratulations on the awesome product, man. Yeah, thank and, you very much. And, and the latest edition as well. So in your favorite team, uh, the colors of your favorite team as well. So uh, you can't sit still. They are flying, Jetfresh. <laughs> So uh, r really cool. Yeah. Uh, Alejandro, Mike, thank you again so much uh, for your time and, and joining Flower Sugar Stocks and, and explaining uh, what's going on in the market. And uh, uh, let's uh, speak each other, uh, talk to each other soon to get, a, to get an update again. Beautiful. So listen, uh, Alejandro, while I have you on the line, would you happen to have 10,000 white roses for me next week? <laughs> Playa Blancas. I only have Playa Blancas. I hope that they'll work. <laughs> only 80 centimeters, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you very much.